Thank you for listening to the Content Magazine Podcast, Conversations with Silicon Valley's Creatives. I'm Daniel Garcia, your host and the cultivator of Content Magazine, published by SV Creates. This episode of the Content Magazine Podcast is brought to you by Bonfire, a Silicon Valley digital agency building elevated websites for ambitious brands. Find out more about Bonfire at bonfire.com. Hi, this is Nick. Today we talk with bass player and composer Nick Pedudos. Hey, Nick, this is Daniel. How are you doing? Hey, Daniel. I'm, I'm doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited to talk to you. I, I don't know when the last time I saw you. Maybe it was the day before you jumped on the plane from New York City. From yeah, 2016. 2016. Was that long ago? So that's yeah. uh, six years ago. So now you've been out in New York pretty much that whole time. I'm sure you came back holidays and a little bit. But yep. is so New York, uh, Brooklyn, is that where you're residing these days? Yeah, that's that's home base now. Um, in in Sunset Park, uh, in, in Brooklyn, I've I've been living in Sunset Park for two years, and then uh, Brooklyn area for for about four, and then uh, the, uh, the city of New York for for five years. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So let's you know before we get into all the wonderful uh, things about your new album that you've released and everything, but what how was that transition from coming from San Jose and going into um, New York? Um, it was it was a big change, and um, you know the first the first year I was out here was my my, my, my first year of school, and I, I definitely felt pretty homesick, yeah. um, a, a, a lot of times. Uh, but I'll, I'll say this: I, I, I count myself lucky because I was able to uh, make a, a, a lot of a lot of lasting friendships, and um, they really helped to give me a sense of home and um, make 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 things feel less less uh, big and and daunting out here yeah and so you went for it to nyu correct yeah yeah right. and so you came out there so i guess in some ways and then you were part of the music program um, yes yes I was. so i guess that probably gave you a little bit of community to kind of jump into right absolutely yeah yeah gosh i mean uh the 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 folks in, in that program i mean I, I i still keep in touch with with so many of them today um, and you know they they, they they really did you know give me a sense of a, a, little, a little family out here so yeah yeah that's cool so what what was it like kind of breaking into uh, the music scene there um, in New York kind of you know because there's quite a few people who head there <laughs> yeah yeah gosh well you know I'll, I'll say this um, starting out going going to school there um, it. it it, it, it helped because there, there was a network of people who um, wanted similar things as I did mm-hmm. and they wanted to get get their music out there and they wanted to get 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 their bands playing yeah um, so uh, being being, being a, a bass player in, in a jazz community there's there, there tends to be a good bit of demand um, <laughs> yeah. and, and I'm very grateful for that um, yeah. so so um, was, was 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 fortunately, um, able to to start working a lot within the first the first year, um, uh, I, I was there, um, yeah. and yeah, you know, playing playing with, with with fellow musicians that I had met at school, and then uh, through through other other outlets too. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I guess uh, yeah, bass players kind of, and bass players and drummers, right, are kind of mm-hmm. you know uh, kind of you know you're you're not going to be out of work, right? It's kind of like the goalie yeah. for soccer right i mean it's like it's a position no, nobody <laughs> well necessarily said. wants to play but hey how did you get into bass over another instrument i know that your it sounds like your grandmother played guitar is that right yeah so so um when i when i started out i was starting out on piano when i was around around five years old my parents signed up my sister and i for piano lessons um and, and that's your, that was your twin sister right my, my my twin sister natalie yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and um we we studied piano for, for a while and you know for for about about eight years mm-hmm. we um we, we we studied that and um while while we were still young kids um my my, my grandmother my, my yaya as, as as you were saying she had this acoustic guitar you know she got from like a, a secondhand store and she would she would play it with um with this pick that was cut out from an old credit card and she yeah, would just cool. like sh- show us songs you know like uh, greek greek pop songs oh, yeah. and and stuff like that um so that was definitely like my first exposure to a string instrument yeah. and i remember loving it i remember re- really gravitating towards it in a big way and having her um uh, show her, show me the these songs and, and and how to play them so that was 
a, a really a, a great bonding experience. Yeah. So then when did you make the transition then from kind of like piano to bass? How did that happen? Oh, yeah. That was that was around middle school. I, I was 12, I think. And um, I got really in I got really into rock music. Yeah. Um, and I, I would, would still cite that as a as a as a, as a pretty big influence um, mm-hmm. in, in my playing. But specifically back then, um, it was seeing Kiss music videos, okay, and, <laughs> and seeing Gene Simmons with his axe bass. And I just thought I got to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, yeah. I would peg you as kind of like a, a Kiss fan. That's kind of like before your time too. So. Uh, yeah, I- I was I was obsessed with them. I mean, I, I wanted to learn every one of their songs. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So that was kind of it. So it was kind of like the rock influence kind of brought you into the bass, and then so yeah. there. How did that transition to being much more focused um, on jazz? Well, in high school, I started in the the orchestra um, as, as a as, as a freshman. I, I, I came into orchestra, and it, the. The reason why, I guess, was the outlet for playing music um, at, at that point mm-hmm. um, w- it looked to me like orchestra um, or jazz band okay. um, or, or both. And I started out by, by doing, doing orchestra and really enjoyed it. Um, uh, it, it, w- it was a good challenge, too, because I, at this point I, I was switching from electric to, to upright bass. Yeah. And the, the year before, towards the end of eighth grade is, is, is when I started um uh, uh, experimenting with upright bass, um, didn't have any, any, uh, re- real formal lessons at that point. Um, but tried to tra- transfer all the knowledge I, I had built up, um, on electric bass onto that. Mm-hmm. And in, in you know, freshman year high school orchestra was when I really started to put it to the test. Um, it wasn't until that the end of, of that year that I had news that the, the bass player in, in the high school jazz band, uh, who's uh, Kanoa Mendenhall, a phenomenal bass player, um, mm. uh, was leaving. And um, that I, I was um, next in line to fill her shoes. Cool. And um, uh, I, my, 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 my friend Bryce Collins gave me some advice. He said, just listen to jazz music obsessively this summer. Um, and that's what I did. I, I, hours every day. Um, nothing could hold my in- interest really as, as, as much as, as I could. And I just wanted to learn as much about it as I could, try to get a bunch of CDs and yeah. uh, learn a lot of songs. Yeah, cool. What were some of those early albums that you listened to that maybe you remember that still kind of like hold an influence or a fondness in your heart? I went to Amoeba Music in San Francisco and I picked up two kind of disparate CDs. Um, I, I got a copy of Duke Ellington's Blues in Orbit, hmm. features his, his big band. And um, and a copy of Miles Smiles, the okay. um, uh, uh, '60s Miles Davis quintet wow. record, um, and which is you know really um, sort of frenetic, f- freewheeling um, uh, 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 kind of sounds. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, both of those really really caught my ear, and I, I remember putting them in my CD player and just really trying to figure out what, what what was what was going on in both of those. So those really drew me in. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. So now then, um, you have, uh, this is your first kind of solo project, right? Yes. Yeah. And, first album. Yeah. First album and, uh, Monos is what it's called, which is yes. Greek for alone or only yep. or something along that line. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And absolutely. now this was kind of, uh, came together. You composed these songs like during COVID. Is that pretty much kind of part of the process or have they been in your mind or? Most of them were during during um, uh, the the 2020 lockdown. Mm-hmm. There was one um, on there called called Theos, which is the first track. That one was was, was before. Um, that was around the summer of 2019. Mm-hmm. But everything else was was all um, over over the the spring um, spring of, of of 2020 into into the the winter of, of that same year. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So would I mean? Um, does the you know how was the lockdown? I mean, as a musician, I mean, gigging stopped. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I'm sure even I know that you teach as well, right? So you can't yep. really go and do that. How did you fare during <laughs> this crazy time? I have to say, on multiple levels, I was really lucky. Um, as you were saying about teaching, I just got a job working at the uh, this music school, Bay Ridge School of Music, out, mm-hmm. out in, in the bottom of Brooklyn. And um, we all transferred our whole operation online, and it was sort mm. of a gamble, but it, it really worked out great. We, we we grew the studio a lot, 
and I, I you know, I'm uh, fortunate enough to have have made some 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 really good uh, connections with the students over these Zoom lessons, which is a kind of mind boggling thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so 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 that was really fortunate. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, gigs, as you said, they really did come to a, a freeze. But I was li- uh, living with a drummer at the time. It was just he he, he and I. And we would play every day for like three, four hours. Cool. Um, and I, I mean, that, that, that really um, scratched a huge itch for both of us. And I still count myself as uh, really, really grateful and lucky for that. Um, and I guess it was the, 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 the tail end of that. Uh, I, I, moved, I moved back home uh, to, to, to San Jose hmm. in M- May through July. Okay. And that was when I started to workshop a lot of um, the uh, solo bass music. Yeah, for for the new realm, sort of. Yeah, yeah. So then, tell me about. I mean, it's like so. Give me a little sense of that because it's definitely this is kind of homage to your uh, Greek influences and your family Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So tell me, how did that come about? What was the kind of thoughts that was going on with that? Yeah, a a really running theme, uh, as you said, is family, Um, family, and and also, you know memories of, of growing up and, mm-hmm. and growing up in California in particular. Um, I don't know. I think, I think a lot of us re- reach, wanted to reach for comfort and comforting memories mm. uh, during, during the lockdown. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I would always come back to those, you know, thinking about being a, being a kid in California, thinking about spending time with, 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 with my, with my Yaya, who's, who is uh, uh, sadly no, no longer with us, but mm. I'm thinking about those, th- th- those memories. Yeah. Um, and you know that 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 really um, uh, uh, both of those things informed a lot of it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So, well, let's get to some of the the compositions here, which are really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I have to say, for, first of all, like um, uh, Smokey says, is probably like kind of one of my favorite. I mean, they're all really cool. Have oh, such oh, great noise. But and that one, you know, in the liner notes, it talks about being like a memory of Santa Cruz and the mountains and and all that kind of stuff. But it kind of has a real fun, I don't know, kind of like a almost like a blues driving kind of beat behind it. You know, what was yeah. some of the the things in your mind and feelings that you had with kind of like putting together that composition? That I mean, that absolutely hits hits the nail on the head. That 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 is really the the kind of feeling I was going for um, with that. But you know, it's the, the, this duality, I guess, with mm. something like the Santa Cruz Mountains. You know, you have this this beautiful mountain range, um, and you know, you're full of uh, you know streams and banana slugs and gorgeous <laughs> trees. Uh, whereas uh, you know that same same mountain range and 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 the the, the forests in it are so prone to wildfires and you know any. Mm-hmm. Any any yeah. li- little little thing can can break out in this catastrophic wildfire. So mm-hmm. um, I, I wanted to make the first half of the song really contemplative and 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 serene, and the second half is is as you said a little bit more driving, kind of urgent, and um, mm-hmm. that 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 contrast I guess was was um, was the the, the, the big. A jumping off point for that song yeah well with that song and the other ones when you come to compose something are, are you how do you approach it are you starting with um you, you know, like that that was like coming with a memory of a of that feeling and then you're trying to put the music to it? or do you kind of like you're you're tooling around and you kind of do a little riff and then you're going like oh that kind of feels like this and then you expand how, how's that kind of process i mean this is always i'm always curious about that process of creation <laughs> Yeah, it really depends on the song. Actually, um, I, I I would love to say it's 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 this specific way for 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 each composition, mm-hmm. but it, it really is quite different for every song. In in this case, um, I'll, I'll I'll admit I had um, a completely different idea of what the song might sound like, hmm. um, which I ended up scrapping um, when at, at at you know a couple couple weeks in, um, and. It, it was it was it was a pattern um, hmm. that 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 that, that I, I, I was playing. It was on, on the upper two strings of the bass, and I, hmm. I, I, I was playing it a lot. And um, that, that was the more driving part, I guess. And hmm. I still used some things from it. Um, but it, when when I when I um, was thinking about what it, what it was going to be called or what what the you know the the, the greater meaning behind the song mm-hmm. um, would be, if you will, um, I, I, I was thinking of of that that. Um, 
that 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 sensation of of driving an urgency hmm. and and maybe even you know um so, uh, a, 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 a scent like like a something a something smoky hmm. of, of something smoky and charred mm-hmm. and um that that popped into my head about about the the, the california fires and yeah. specifically something that was close to home like like the santa cruz mountains and um if not for that thought um I, the, the 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 first half of the song, which is slower and mm-hmm. and you know more serene, and that might not have um, came into being. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I know some you know some musicians, and I've heard this you know especially in jazz, like they'll take a, it's almost mathematical for them, right? Mm. They're thinking in terms of, um, you know, like how can I make one song just in one key or one you know no chord changes and and play yeah. with the notes within that you know like they do this kind of are, was there any of that going on in some of the things like hey i want to challenge myself to do this type of style composition or mode or something like that uh, yeah yeah um let's see I, it may not have been as conscious as mm-hmm. as this song is going is going to be an E flat, mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. and and you know by gosh it it, it better be all an E flat. <laughs> right. um, I I think um, you know the more conscious thing was a desire for variety in the album. Mm. Um, there was a point where I was like, okay, I got these four songs, and they all s- have a sort of similar vibe. We need something different. Mm. Um, that's where something like like uh, Leonidas came mm-hmm. about yeah. uh, that, that that's the, the one uh, uh you know pretty pretty uh fast throughout mm-hmm. um, the, the um that entire song yeah and um the the uh, main melody for that is really just um so, so, something I, I i thought about while uh, uh you know uh, cleaning the kitchen that night. <laughs> yeah and, yeah, and it, i just i <laughs> grabbed my phone and opened up the voice memos and just set, set you know sung it into there and yeah that's really how that one came about that's cool. So then you kind of got the melody and you kind of like do da do da do da into your phone and then played it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's that, awesome. I, I will say that, that as far as method goes, that is something that is consistent for every song. Yeah. Um, I, I, it, it, something will, will, will usually come, come to me either when, I'm, when I just touch the bass for the first time mm-hmm. that day and I'm experimenting with stuff mm-hmm. or if I'm, if I'm going about my day and then something pops up. But regardless, it's, it's you know, either play or sing it in, into the, the voice memos and then come back to it later on. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the Leonis, Leno, what Leonida, Didas, Leonidas. Yeah, I have to cut that out. Leonidas. Um, <laughs> that you know, that's good. I mean, it's got the description of you know being like a Spartan general, and it's kind of mm-hmm. fun. It really does have that kind of march, kind of chase, and I even think even the way that um, you know you can hear the bass strings kind of clicking, and you're doing kind of like harmonics or not harmonics, but harmony with like the low notes and the high notes. It gives you like this yeah. sense of like, uh, you know, people walking in step, like multiple people, you know, that was kind of, mm. it was kind of a fun, uh, feeling out of that. Now, now I have to listen to a different thinking about, okay, if I'm cleaning my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hey, I, 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 I love that image. And, and, <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't really know where, where my mind was when, when I was, when I was, when, when I was cleaning up that night, yeah. but th- that, that image you said of, of, of a line of, of like a battalion marching yeah. forward, yeah. that, that was without a doubt, uh, so, something that 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 was really present in my mind when, when I was thinking about how how um, the, the 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 how the melody would go. Yeah. Um, I wanted to have that forward motion and that feeling of like like this is you know this is a, a unit that's moving forward and they're um, you know right ready to 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 go in. Um, and you know th- thinking also about the the the, the Spartan general, you know, and, mm-hmm. um, th- things were looking terrible for him and and his mm. and, and his 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 army and. You know, he he's he still said, you know, we're we're gonna go in and and, and give it our best shot. So yeah, um, that that was some after the fact inspiration that that kind of helped to flesh out the tune. Yeah, yeah it's cool. And you know, I have to admit, I don't think I've ever listened to an entire album other than yours um, of just bass. You know? Oh, yeah, um, sure. No, I mean, I, I understand. You know, I, and I don't know if many people have other than maybe bass players. <laughs> yeah, no, you're uh, right. And I that. actually don't even know how many are out there. Um, maybe we could do a little list of the, the ones you recommend. <laughs> but um, I'd be happy to. Yeah. But uh, the thing that I really enjoyed is that I never noticed this as much. You know, the versatility, like I was talking about, you know, playing, 
you know, like traditionally, like on a regular guitar, right? You're playing, you're playing with, you're playing the bass strings and the walk down while you're doing the melody and that yeah. kind of stuff with the other. And that's happening here with what you're doing with the bass. And I've never, mm. you know, normally just kind of think of the bass, especially as an accompaniment instrument. Yeah. You know, sometimes there's a little bit of kind of like chordish kind of things, but the, you think generally kind of single note. So that was really kind of refreshing and fascinating to see that. And then hearing the the clicking of the strings and the sliding of the fingers and you breathing, you know, it really does have a very kind of intimate feel. Like, oh, I'm with Nick in his kitchen as he's <laughs> marching <laughs> as a Spartan. <laughs> yeah. all, all, all of the above happen on an, any given night. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I really appreciate that. And I want to I wanna say as a shout out to um, uh, David Stoller um, at the Samurai Hotel recording studio in Astoria. Hmm. Is, is, uh, uh, he, he's, he's got a lot to do with that. You know, okay. he, he was in charge of, of, of miking and, and engineering, mixing the entire session. Um, and I've I've never been so happy with 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 um, the the sound of of, of, of the bass, yeah. uh, with the sound of, of, of my bass that is, um, yeah. w- uh, uh, you know, w- when it's in his hands. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to him for that. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm glad too. I, I, I'm really glad that it does feel intimate because that's that's something that that was um, a huge a huge goal with the album, making music yeah. that that felt intimate. Yeah. Um, I, I think you know during during the, the lockdown, mm-hmm. I I leaned more and more towards you know the the kind of pared down just you know just voice and guitar or just like a solo solo saxophone or something like yeah. that. Um, maybe subconsciously, I, I I was seeking more and more of that out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's what I was wondering. I was going to ask you about the recording. Was it something that you had done? yourself but you so you were in a studio yes uh, yeah that's awesome that's cool now also too just about the production value i mean nowadays right i mean and yeah i don't know i watched uh over the christmas break uh the beatles uh, get back right and the mm. the over taping and the uh the clipping of taking the solo from this track this this one and putting it together that yeah with what you're doing here you're you're, you're playing the entire composition straight through Right. I yes. mean, there's no like, oh, can we take this measure from this time around? I mean, these are I mean, you probably did multiple takes. Yes, definitely did. But yeah, it's one take per. So- right. Pretty much. Or is there a little bit of uh, recording magic happening? Well, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah. It, it, so there 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 um, there is one one song on there. Hmm. The ending is harmonics, and oh, yeah. um, they're they're um, some 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 real real sensitive harmonics. Hmm. And um, the 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 end of the the end of the the first day came in the studio, and um, we, we were listening back to everything. And mm-hmm. um, I, there there was there was a take of uh, that song that was from you know ten minutes before that the overall take was was not something i was as happy with but hmm. the, the harmonics really sang in a beautiful way hmm. so that was a, a point where i made a request to to david to to, to go ahead and just swap those out yeah. um, everything else though is is a, a organic and free yeah. of modification <laughs> yeah no that's cool and which one was it is that the trestron the the leaves of the uh, rose one is that the yeah, one so the so this one was was on cite cite okay all right yeah. is that the one the real sustained note at the end that's kind of like Yes, it's like a nine. <laughs> it was I actually it's funny because I listened to it. it was like, oh, here's his his Beatles White album with a long <laughs> sustaining. <laughs> okay, that was exactly. Tuesday. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That was kind of fun the way that kind of lingers. It, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. Nice. I mean, the, um, there's a uh, sp- speaking of of bass and and solo bass. Um, there, there's uh, the, the very first Jaco Pistorius um, album it was he had a band, but he recorded uh, I think one or two solo compos- compositions on hmm. there. And on the yeah. end of the song "Portrait of Tracy," he has this really beautiful ringing harmonic, mm. um, and and I, you know, I, I I'd be lying if I said that that didn't inspire me for for the the ending of, of that song. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So the, so doing this album, what um which what aspect of these songs that not uh, these compositions kind of uh, do you think stretched you the most as uh, first? Let's do two. Let's do thing first as a composer. Mm-hmm. And then secondly, as a bass player. Cool. Yeah, as a composer, I was really thinking about m- melody and, and harmony, mm-hmm. um, wh- whether that's melody and accompaniment, uh, melody and counter melody. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it, any any framework of that to make sure that that at every turn of the song, mm. uh, you're, you're you're hearing something melodic, mm. but you're also hearing something that's that's supportive of it. And I kind of arrived at a few different ways of doing that. Whether that was um, play a melody and at the end of the phrase have a lower note that mm. gets played at the same time. Mm-hmm. Or play a, a portion of the melody and then separately play a, um, a, a, a low note phrase or or just a low note that's that's kind of one after the other to kind of get this sort of counterpoint yeah. um, sound. Um, and uh, you know it, it, it's definitely still a huge work in progress and and one that I, I really embrace and I'm you know pretty much endlessly fascinated by. Hmm. Um, but th- those were the the two that um, uh, the two methods as far as as composition that mm-hmm. that, that, that I, I i came to and i found out that you could you could really go a lot of directions with those so mm. so that um that, that that gave me a lot of a lot to play with yeah. um and as far as technique goes um to, to, to your second point um some of some of these songs I'll, I'll be honest they're they're more challenging than than any other mm. um uh, bass rep that i've really really worked on uh, mm. up to this point um, as far as like jazz or or, or improvised or um, you, you know uh, non classical music goes, I would say yeah. that th- th- these are the, the more challenging compositions. Um, just being that intonation is super paramount in mm-hmm. in this case, as it always is. But when it's so exposed and you're yeah. re- relying on one note to be in tune, so that the note on top of it sounds in tune, yeah. um, then the stakes are higher than ever. So really making sure that that I, I was getting that together, um, doing a lot of practicing w- w- with the bow, um, using drones in, the, in, 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 a, in a headset to make sure that everything was 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 as in tune as it could be. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's like what I was saying earlier about the is that I really notice it is that the, it's the layers that are going on, um, mm-hmm. which normally, like you say, like in a normal jazz situation, I think, you know, when the, the bassist does the solo, you don't hear as much of that going on where yeah. you have the bass doing something, the melody doing something, and they're, they're, they're counter supporting each other. So I think that's what's really beautiful about what, what you've done here with this. It's great. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, and then I guess for a variety, you threw in a, a bow that kind of gave it the the cello effect. Is that the? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the, I think that that that, that that's a, a great comparison. You know, um, the, uh, for for you know for um, for, for our ears, we're we're so used to hearing um, a low string instrument with a bow a, a, as a cello, and mm-hmm. I, I think like for 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 a lot of parts of the bass and cello, there's some range that overlap. Um, but yeah, that 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 was for um, another one, one of of the Greek songs. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, at the outset, I wasn't planning on doing any any arco, any bowing, hmm. um, but playing playing that song, um, I, I I guess something about it, something about that that melody, um, just really really kind of heart rending. Hmm. Um, I, I I wanted to to use the bow to to capture that. Yeah. Um, the the recording that I I, I, I love of that is um, there's there's a, a Greek singer um, Savina Savina Yanatu, and she 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 sings it just in the, the most gorgeous way possible, and I I would listen to it at, at, you know every day, hmm. and I thought how can I get as close as I can to the sound of of a, vo- of a voice, and yeah. I thought maybe the bow might might help me get there. That's cool. And how do you pronounce the name of that? That Stopake. Yeah, that's Stopake Stoksanaleo. Okay. Um, stopa is like I I told you is short for stoipa, and k is and stoksanaleo. I'm telling you again. So I told you, and I'm telling you again. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So this one, and then there is. Um, so is there three kind of redone uh, folk songs, or that you've done in it? Is that kind of like so? A, or three? Or um, four? It, it would be a, a grand total of two. It would be okay, it is um, two. The, okay. the, the, the one we just spoke about, and then the other one is Tis Trianda Filia Stafila, which yeah. is the the leaves of the rose. Okay. And um, yeah, yeah. Gosh, I okay, I, I really enjoyed w- working with with those so so much. I mean, um, yeah. And I, I'll, I'll say this too: like hearing, um, listening to to the recordings of of of, of singers. Singers. I remember when I checked those out for the first time. It was not too long after my my Aya's passing. Hmm. Hear, you know, just hearing people uh, the, the the singers uh, sing those sing those those lyrics really um, uh, brought me back hmm. surprisingly um, to to hearing her voice and and like her 
her pronunciations and her, her, her cadences and you know, the way she, she would say certain letters. Yeah. So um, I, I definitely got a lot of com comfort from, from those. Yeah, awesome. So, I mean, is this somewhat a, a you know, a, to the memory of your grandmother, would you say, is that? Absolutely. Gonna, yeah. 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 When did yeah. she pass um, away? So let, let me see. It was a couple, a, a couple years into my college. It was about mm. halfway through when I was in college. Um, okay. um, I think it was, um, I, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to give you a wrong year, but it was about halfway through, 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 yeah. um, through, through, through when I was in college. And that was when I started checking out a lot of Greek folk music yeah. and, um, trying, trying to, uh, you know, I guess get, get more in touch with, 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 with that side of, of the family history, get, get more in touch with, with her memory. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, I, 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 I really do think, um, uh, um, in a unintended way, it really, it helped, um, it helped that, 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 you know, that, that process of, of, of sort of, you know, like healing and, yeah. and, 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 um, feeling, feeling, feeling positive after, after she, uh, she left us. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah. that, that song there, the Tres Dian Dian Te Fias Te Fia. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> I'm, yeah try, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you're, you're not too far off. <laughs> you're like, uh. <laughs> but, um, just the the melody in that is really beautiful, and then, yeah, I it really has, you know, as someone who doesn't really know that much about genres and music and stuff like that, but it really does have like kind of a Middle Eastern, um, you know, med I guess it's more probably more Mediterranean kind of mm -hmm. feel the way that you kind yeah. of like the pacing of it, and um, it's really it's it, it it's fun to see. Like, like I said, it's really fun to see the bass doing these different kind of melodies and runs um yeah it's it's, it's really cool i appreciate it i i appreciate that yeah you know um it, for that song in particular um this is something that i i started doing after the recording of the mm. album but that song um it, it uses a scale that is it's responsible oh. for giving it that 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 flavor yeah. that, 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 that 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 you were describing um, it's it's a it's a sound that that is really prevalent in not only Greek but also Turkish music. Okay. Um, and it's it's a little it's a little different than a lot of the the scales that 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 that, that we hear in, in in most of the music that that we listen to. Um, but it, it's got a note that's um a, it's it's an in, in it's a quarter step instead of a half step, which is like the okay. the 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 main division that we're used to hearing a lot of notes. There's a quarter step note in there. And um, you, um, I will admit, after the album is, is when I, I started started um, performing the song like that. So yeah. wh whenever I, I play it now, I, I, I make sure to incorporate that. But even without that particular note, it's still using that same scale that that gives it that flavor. Yeah, yeah. You could really, yeah, you can really feel it just has the different, yeah, it's different scale. Yeah. yeah now, so then, so then, now you also have composed and played with um, a group, right? Uh, yeah, it, Itaki is that how you say it? Itaki? Yeah, that's Itaki. right. Yeah, now and that is probably. I mean, that's a little. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to say it. that's. I guess that's a little bit more experimental jazz. Sure. I mean, is I would almost say, you know, forgive me. You know, I'm like I'm not a music critic. <laughs> no, no, no. Th th that's a fair classification. <laughs> and I would say it's a little more uh, aggressive in a way. Yeah. Oh, I, I, absolutely. And you composed most of those that are at least out there on the SoundCloud, right? The, the, what the yes. pieces that you've done, right? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Um, I, 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 as a matter of fact, all of them actually. And, okay. um, you, you know, the, the, the funny thing is before I recorded Monos, I had every intention of getting Ithaki into the studio okay. and recording, recording us. Um, and yeah, um, I'm, I think it's sort of a blessing in disguise though, that hmm. that didn't happen right away because, um, I have plans to to do that um, to 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 uh, reconvene with them soon, yeah. um, and um, to get that ball rolling again, and we'll all be uh, fresher, I think. But um, uh, yeah, it, it, that's that's I guess another another side of of of, of, of the writing I do, and also yeah. reflective of of so, so, some other influences. You know, um, uh, a, a big uh, you know colossal influence of the of that group. Um, is uh, Ornette Coleman's quartet, um, hmm. his, his 1959 album Shape of Jazz to Come, hmm. probably one of one of the most influential pieces of music that I've ever heard um, to this day. And that um, the, the music on there, the band on there, the way they improvised was was a huge inspiration for for hmm. that group. Um, and, but 
you know, now coming back into it, I want to um, also incorporate some of the influences influences of Greek folk music in, mm. into that group too. Yeah. So um, that that is a work in progress, but um, I'm really excited to reconvene with them soon. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it just I just noticed that it it was a different. You know, and, and especially looking at you as the composer of both these or of the different compositions of, you know, just seeing the different feel and flair that's coming out of it. And I was just thinking, like, um, is there another kind of like, well, it's put it this way, like after doing Monos, um, has that opened up your mind to even like another kind of avenue to explore that you're like, Oh, hmm. <laughs> you know? Definitely. Yes, absolutely. When, when I was rehearsing the music for it, um, you know, for hours and hours, I just uh, locked up in, in, in my room. <laughs> I, I, I got to thinking about all the different possibilities that another solo bass record could take. Yeah. Um, as, as you can tell, I, I um, almost have a short attention span for some, for some, of, for some, 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 some of the projects in the moment. Um, uh, um, but, you know, lo- lo- looking ahead, um, the next one would would involve um, would involve some singing, um, which is something that I also started experimenting with. Oh, awesome! Um, and you know, um, uh, I, I'd be remiss not to mention the music of Esperanza Spalding here. Hmm. Um, seeing seeing her play play the bass at a, a virtuosic level and sing um, at an equally virtuosic level and and improvise and um, make beautiful you know touching compositions hmm. um, r- really inspired me to try it out and um, ex- explore it I guess um, so yeah th- th- that, that would be what future solo bass projects would hold awesome bass and, and vocals yeah that's cool so then are you the type of uh, person I know I know I'm like this with the magazine like I'm super excited as we get into it and then as we start getting into it, I, I am still enjoying it and I'm putting it together, but kind of when it starts to get almost to the end, I'm already looking at the next one like, oh man, I can't wait yes. to get to that. Are you, so are, how are you with, how are you feeling? I mean, this just came out, what, the 11th? Is that right? Was the yeah, release of the full that's right. album? So it's the 11th, which is now when we're recording this just four days ago. How right. are you kind of like, oh, I want to get to something else or, you know, wh- where were you at kind of like in the emotional pro- part of it? I, I like the, the the way that you described it. It really hits the nail just on the head. I mean, like the 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 week before, um, I think uh, you know I I was definitely prepping the music a lot. Um, it had been a while since I had recorded it, so just making sure that like you know the month leading up to it, that the yeah. music was in 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 the the top shape that that it could be. Um, but you know half half the time when I when I was away from the bass, I was thinking, gosh. I can't wait to get uh, the Athaki music together again. Right, and right. I'm, you know, and, and, you know, when I would have a, a break at work at the music school, I would sit at the piano and, and draft out new songs that I would, I would do with them. <laughs> and yeah. so, I mean, I, I really hear that 100%. Uh, yeah. that, that, that's definitely how I feel, but you know, I, I still got some more, some more um, shows um, lined up just to, to, to sort of celebrate the, the, yeah. the, 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 the release of Manos and, and maybe more accurately just like, you know, um, uh, show show the the music yeah totally. so um I, I i definitely am going to um be i guess like uh, you know, doing keep, the hard keeping, work keeping yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and like keep keeping keeping focused yeah for yeah. those yeah that's the hard thing right is to keep yeah. focused well that's the thing when you're a creative person especially when you're getting inspiration and uh curiosity with other things right it's hard to do the discipline of like no i have to come there's part of now for you at least playing this and showcasing it is part of the creative process to share it right um yeah yeah so do you have some gigs um said and are you going to play this you know are you going to do solo shows with just monos in its entirety or at least half of it and that seems like yeah. physically demanding but um you, you, you know um I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, when, when, when I was practicing the, the music for the recording session initially back last summer, mm-hmm. um, I, I definitely did start to notice that, that, you know, I, I, if, 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 if I had a day where I didn't go into teach, mm-hmm. um, I would pretty much, uh, carve out you know, about six hours or so, mm-hmm. five, six hours wow. to, to, to practice it. Yeah. And by, by, by the end, you know, I, I would, I would have to, you know, take stock of the fact that, okay, like you know, <laughs> hands, hands and fingers are, are definitely um, re- reaching a, a certain point. Yeah. Um, but after, after an, enough times of practicing that with enough breaks, I think that's a really important thing too. Whenever 
um, you know, if any, you know, other bass players or, or musicians are, are out there, you know, trying to get a solo project together, yeah. um, it, it, you know, and a solo set together, you know, just making sure that, you know, you build, build it up with enough breaks and you're practicing. Um, yeah. uh, uh, but, you know, after that point, it started to be okay. Like, I, I know how to pace myself. Um, I, I know what's in and out of my ability range. So all the sets that I play mm-hmm. are within an hour. Um, the, the, the one I played on the 11th, um, what, what was, was, uh, about an hour uh, with, with a little bit of talking in, in, in between. Yeah. Um, and you know, felt, felt, felt good by the end of it. Didn't, didn't, didn't feel spent. Yeah. Um, the, I'll, I'll be playing one this, this Friday and it's also going to be the same kind of deal. Um, the format for both of those, I, I hate to say format, but you know, the, 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 the way I present the music for each of them is about four or five songs from, mm-hmm. from Monos out of the eight total. And then, you know, f- f- three or four of just some other arrangements that I have in mind. Yeah. Um, the ones that either just came to me or ones that I've known for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, will you be coming out playing live here on the West Coast back in the hometown of San Jose by any chance in the next uh, yes. year or yes. so? Yes. So um, definitely, yes. Um, I, so as, as far as, as dates, though, um, I, I, I hate to say it, um, none, none are confirmed right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, no problem. But, uh, um, Still working uh, out that I'll, contract, right? The, yeah. the hotel, <laughs> you, you the, the green room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We need, we need uh, feta cheese in, in every green room. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. And ouzo. Um, <laughs> th- there we go. Hey, th- now you're talking. Um, but, you know, um, I, just to have, have uh, floated some some ideas with, with different places out there. Um, I, I don't want to say anything too soon. Um, yeah. Um, but, um, you know, I've just been, been talking with some, some of the folks actually um, at, at, at San Jose Jazz and they, they've, they've expressed some interest. Yeah. Um, and one one that I thought about just in the last couple of days was, um, you know, seeing if, if the folks at the, at the at the Rose Garden, at the, at the oh. Municipal Rose Garden might, might, might be interested in, hmm. in opening up um, their stage. So I, I, I'm going to follow that. Yeah, and and see see if, if anything could come of that, and, and even just like like even like a community concert kind of vibe. Yeah, I think w- w- would be really wonderful Saturday afternoon or something. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. All right, what was? Uh, I mean, I, I I I'm proud of you. You must be proud of yourself for Thanks, Monos. It's great. It's really it's really wonderful. And but that. for you yourself, when you do this, and you know, I think everybody has. You know, it's difficult as an artist because you kind of you love your own work and you hate your own work, right? Sure. Yes. But what's from since this when you look back, you go like, you know what? Like, I, I'm I'm very pleased with this above. I mean, all that you're pleased, of course, should be, but a little bit more of like, wow, you know what? That was. I'm I, I'm really proud of that composition, or maybe that something about it, or even a riff. What What would you say? Yeah. Um, the first time I recorded Sita was was back in August 2021, mm-hmm. and I, uh, w- w- I w- listened to it um, only just to make sure that you know the sound quality was okay, this and that was okay, and I I, I, I really was w- was not proud of the first time I recorded it, hmm. and I I made a point to go back and 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 book another hour in in, in the studio to, to to brush that one up, um, and that was just January. Hmm. So um, when when I listened back to that one w- was maybe one, one one of one of those one of those um, uh, sort of limited times where, where I, I could really breathe a sigh of relief and say, wow, like hmm. um, th- this, you know, is probably one of it's one of the, the trickiest um, compositions that I've put myself through for yeah. for, 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 for for the bass. Hmm. And um, I'm happy to say that I, I walked I've walked away from it with something that I, that I, I feel proud of. So I think awesome. that was a big one. Yeah, that's cool. And then with uh, eight songs on the monos, what does that equal of what didn't make it, or the pieces that it of new compositions it created? What would you say? <laughs> What's the? Ooh, that, that that's a great question. Gosh, um, there. Hmm. I I would count myself as lucky to say that there it there's there's nothing that got that got left out. Hmm. There's some stuff that I thought of maybe right after, um, but yeah. but again, you know, the, the the as we were talking about earlier, the way I I thought of it was well, that's fine. That's gonna be uh, uh, yeah. that's gonna be some raw material for the next one. Yeah. yeah. So um, there's the, the the next one is almost halfway formulated in, in my head already, <laughs> even though that might be another four years out. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Yeah. All righty. Well, I really appreciate it. And then, every, and then uh, so this is released by uh, Slow and Steady Records, 
right? Yes. yes. And a huge thank you to them. Yeah. So I let's do just real quick on that. Like, what's the how does it work as a solo bass uh, musician putting out a album first first album of your own personal compositions? I mean, it's not like it's it's not like Hollywood where you're getting like a record contract, right? There, you know, are like, yeah. how, right? I mean, what's? Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I uh, wish. Yeah. Next time. Next it, one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That 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 uh, uh, remains to be seen, but uh, yeah. I I definitely uh, credit Slow and Steady with helping uh, give a lot of. Um, uh, rhyme and reason to mm. to the uh, uh, release process. Mm. It, it, I definitely felt less alone in terms of putting it on streaming. They were hugely helpful in that, um, getting the band camp, get band camp, excuse me, page set up, mm. um, and um, you know they were really helpful in promoting it, um, making yeah. sure that that all, all all of their followers got word of it, sending out email blasts and everything. Yeah. Um, and and you know like I I, I um, am so honored you know to 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 be part of what they do because the, all the musicians on it are people that you know I I um, either either admired or or knew directly back back in California um, yeah. and the West Coast in general so yeah. um, it, it it really felt it felt right um, for for lack of better words that's awesome yeah that's good yeah and they, somebody from their team did email me. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh, my gosh, Nick is coming out with that one. I was like, i got to do some. And then quite honestly, I have to apologize. I kind of forgot. And then, no, you, okay. and then you emailed me, and I was like, that's right. Oh, my gosh, we got to get Nick. Yeah. Oh, so, nice. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, it worked out. So, hey, you know, congratulations. And I just want to say, Thanks, like, you Daniel. know, thank you even back, you know, 2016 when you were helping out with the magazine. I mean, like, oh, even course. then, I mean, you, you know, you were like, one of those people, Nick, that, you know, you meet and you're such a good soul. You're a good person. And, you know, I'm so happy for you for this this project. And I look forward to what else you're going to be doing. What You know, what's coming out next with the vocals and bass? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really appreciate the, 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 the kind words, Daniel. I mean, like the, the, the time I spent at, at the magazine was, was, was definitely huge and you know, just uh, feeling, feeling, feeling. Teaching you what not to do and where you don't, and where you don't want to work. <laughs> far, far from it. No, <laughs> like, no. I, I, I was, I, I was going to say in, 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 in really feeling the, the, the love for San Jose and, and the, 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 the admiration for all the individual people in it and the attention to the, the attention to, to detail of like, Hey, let's, 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 let's shine a spotlight on, on this, on this person or on this, on this little organization and like, you know, let's, let, let's flesh them out and, and make them like, a, a you know, uh, give, give, give them some, some story in depth. I, I thought that was re- a beautiful thing that you guys continue yeah. to do. So, well, cool. so thank you for that. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. I think you, you know, there's, we have a list of interns. We've had some really great interns, quite honestly, and you are on the top list of it. And oh, I really I appreciate, appreciate that. it. And, that, that's an honor. And so, yeah. So thank you. And congratulations on the album. I'm Thanks, actually going to be driving up the peninsula this afternoon and oh, I'm going to I'm going to put it on the on the Spotify so my wife can hear it too because I've been listening oh, to super. it. Oh yeah, super. Oh gosh, I, I appreciate so, that. Yeah. Nice. If, if if I may real quick before we go yeah. there's two people that I also yeah. would be remiss to not think. Yes. Um the, the the album artwork on there um and I I'll, I'll make sure that you guys yeah. get a copy very soon. Um it is is all done by Ash Saw. Um, phenomenal designer and also someone who I'm very proud to call my girlfriend. Oh, awesome. Um, and she, she took care of all, all the, the artwork inside and out. Um, the video that, that, that uh, you, you may have seen um, uh, floating around the internet, um, Seiji Amashita, an uh, old friend from high school, awesome. um, it, uh, it took care of that now. Really uh, 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 f- phenomenal at, at what he does. So, so a heartfelt thank you to both of them. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the artwork, actually. I forgot about that. Just um, yeah. the, um, you know, kind of monochromatic with a couple pops of color. I was wondering, did you kind of talk about that kind of like an idea or you just said hey do something cool <laughs> i said as long as there, there's a fig on it i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> a little, she, she took care of the rest a little nod to, <laughs> to the greek influence <laughs> that's right exactly exactly <laughs> yeah okay did she uh, did she listen to some of the compositions and then come up with it? i'm just kind of curious yes, that that's a, a huge part of her process she, she always take, take takes a lot of uh, you know takes stock in, in, in listening to all the music yeah well, she has no choice, probably, because you're playing it all the time. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's overheard some. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's cool. Well, it is. It's great, and I, I think it's a. It's really nice. 
a nice cover um, for it. And I was even thinking, like, it's yeah. kind of fun how it is kind of, you know, it's not monochromatic. I mean, it is monochromatic with a pop of two, maybe three-ish little colors. But I thought how fitting exactly. just for the sense of a bass solo album. It's kind of, it's one instrument, but there are these incredible bright uh, pops that come and shake it up so it's it's very yeah, i love that interpretation yeah i probably read into it too much but hey no hey go for it <laughs> hey man it's awesome so monos is out there for everyone to get and then um are you doing any kind of stuff online too or are you you know because of the covid are you doing like online concerts and those kind of things <laughs> The, 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 the closest I got to that was doing an Instagram live video for, for the, the, the release show. Yeah. Um, but, you know, um, th there is a YouTube playlist out there of all this footage that Seiji shot from the studio. OK, awesome. Um, and it's, it's for about half of the songs on the album. So, so, you know, in case anyone wants to, like, watch as opposed to listen to the album, they can also do that. Yeah, cool. All right. And this is available on CD on, yep. and on vinyl. Yeah. Um, so um, for, for now, just CD, but okay. but also on on Bandcamp, Spotify, iTunes, all, all that good all stuff. All that good stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Ooh. Well, thank you, Nick. Hey, man, I really you, admire you, and it's great talking to you. And I can't wait to see you in person. Maybe when you come back home. Yeah, Congratulations. I'll, 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 I'll give you a heads up when I'm back in in, in, the, in the in the West Coast. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right, all man. Right, we'll talk to you later. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. See ya. All right. Bye. To find out more about Nick and his debut solo bass album, Monos, go to his website, nickpadunos.com, to follow him on Instagram at vagbass. Thank you for listening to the Content Magazine podcast. Follow us on social media at Content Mag. Become a member and help us to continue to tell the stories of the South Bay's creatives. This episode's music is 408 by Jack Pavlina. Follow him on Spotify and also on his Instagram at Jack Pavlina Music.